I'm going to push on you a little bit, John. Okay, push. <laughs> so, rewind to, gosh, what year was it, 2015 or 2016 when we lost to uh, Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota in the same weekend at home. We got kind of, we got crushed by them a little bit, didn't we, that? Yeah, it was, yeah? it was first time we lost back-to-back -back at home, I think, ever in the history of the program. And so I know that we, as a program as a whole, um, and always with our girls, we do not show them that we get caught up in the winning and the losing. But if we're going to be vulnerable and, and transparent and pull the, the curtains back a little bit, how do you feel immediately after those games? And I'm going somewhere with this, so. Okay. Well, I usually feel sick to my stomach. I want to put my hand through the wall uh, <laughs> and uh, feel like a failure. So you have, you have these immediate reactions that are really genuine, honest reactions to, we've worked really, really hard. I thought we were really well prepared. I cared deeply about this program and these athletes, and this did not go the way that I wanted it to. Right. Okay. So maybe talk through a little bit, because I think this is the more interesting part, right? Because between the moment when we walk off the court and you're having that strong emotional response, which is totally natural and expected, and the and the next 10 minutes before you have to go in and talk to your team, I want you to talk a little bit about what happens for our group in that 10 minutes, because I think that 10 minutes is so critical to why we're able to sustain that process focus and not ride the highs and lows. Because if you acted on that 10 minutes, I think things would be really, really different for our program. So speak a little bit about what happens in that 10 minutes from when we walk off the court as a, as a staff, the girls, just to, so everyone's clear, the girls will go in the locker room and they'll talk by themselves for a little bit and the coaches all meet and debrief for a little bit. And John, I want you to talk a little bit about that. Well, the old days, I would, I, there was no debrief. It was straight in there and I told them what, I, what they needed to hear. And I can, you know, someday we could sit down over coffee and I'll take you through all the, all the, times I blew matches, seasons, players' confidence uh, by how I reacted after a match. And, I, and they're, they're ingrained in my head. They're nightmares. <laughs> but what we started doing was we have that the coaches there, and then I think what we do is I, I think I walk in and say, well, what do you guys think? And everybody kind of gives their feedback. And so then when we walk in there, we have a plan on what we're going to talk about, what we're going to address. And it's become much better because – the heat of the moment, you're going to say something you're going to regret. And uh, so I just think it, you know, frames a perspective. Okay, here's where we're at. Here's what we need to talk to. Here's how we want them to leave. And then we can go more into it next week. And so, What do you get out of that 10 minutes, John? Uh, I think it's, I get a, a, like a, a good perspective. You know, maybe it, you know, my, my emotions aren't clouded or I, it's a perspective is, that's non-emotional. Yeah. Non-judgmental so much and and gives me a so, chance to, to kind of wind down. Because, I yeah. mean, you got to remember, we're playing in front of 8,000 people. It's loud in there. It's on TV. I mean, it, you, your, your adrenaline's pumping. It's, yep. Yep. I don't care who you are. It's, yep. it's emotional and it's intense. And, um, you know, and, and we're, we're very competitive people. I John, think I'm curious about that piece you said – part of that initial reaction is I am a failure. And so I'm assuming part of that perspective taking with your staff is pulling, like pulling, adding some perspective of you are not a failure in this. And I mean, I think feelings of failure are so common in the sporting world. Could you talk a little bit more about like how you're able to sort of zoom back from that? And uh, I mean, I'm assuming like I am a failure is a, is a self-centered perspective. How do you zoom out and sort of see your team and not make it about your failure. Yeah, well, I think the, the failure part is more of I let everybody down, I didn't do a good enough job, mm. you know, I, I, I wasn't a good enough coach. So, but I, I know the players feel that. I mean, it's a, it's a natural thing. And so, uh, again, it's about the perspective and I think just, you know, having a chance to just kind of wind down a little bit uh, and looking, looking forward to how we're going to teach and grow from that moment. And sometimes in, when you lose, you actually can grow more as a team. And the weekend Brett's referring to, we, you know, 
just think about that. I, that I've been coaching in Nebraska 15 years. And it's the first, in the first time in the history of the program, we lost back to back at home. Can you imagine the pressure and the fear of the failure I felt at that moment? But we used that as a great teaching and learning and we kind of hit bottom and bounced up. And after that weekend, we went on and won over the next two years, 32 straight matches and a national championship in there. So we, we did a great job of taking a, a tragic weekend and turning it into something very powerful. And now, there was a lot that happened in the next 48 hours, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but again, we did it in a non-emotional, mm -hmm. uh, very matter of fact. We were very honest. We were vulnerable. We, were, we did a great job communication. It wasn't a yell and rant and a blame session by anybody on the team or our staff. And so with that, that team became special. That staff was special to be able to handle that. And. Uh, I think that's the art of coaching where you've, you know, you have a chance to, to do great things. You can also have a chance to blow it. And I, and I can tell you, I, someday I would like to write a chapter in a book of all the days I blew it as a coach. I think that's, I, I love that 10 minutes because going back to the book, I think one of the things the book highlights, the, the whole point of the book is that you take these really simple things that everyone tends to overlook as really unimportant. And when you add them up over time, they become so critical. And I think, John, the way that we have started, the way that we handle the, the, the time between second and third set, and the way that we handle the time, the 10 minutes before you go in and talk to them, I think that has done so much for us sustaining a process focus across a match and then across the season, right? Um, I think you've used those times really masterfully to, to cool your own emotions down um, and gain more control over those, hit the reset button like we talk about with our players all the time after a mistake or an error, and then to reframe. I think those 10 minutes, we use that a ton to reframe the situation and to figure out how are we going to shift into a growth mindset here? Because at the end of those matches, we all are feeling pretty emotional. And we know that we have a very short amount of time to recalibrate and, sh and shift into a growth focused mindset and that we cannot show them because we need, because they're just, they're hurt more than we are, you know, and, and we need to help them shift into that place so that they can come back at it the next day. And, and it also, I think it's helped us sustain their confidence across the season, even when there are these really hard Big Ten matches. No question. No question.